when we evaluate the given surface integral, where the surface S is a helicoid with the vector equation given by R of u comma v, and u is on the closed interval from zero to four, and v is on the closed interval from zero to two pi. For a surface S given parametrically, or by a vector valued function R of u comma v as shown here, that is defined over region R in the uv plane, so the region R will be the projection of R of u comma v onto the uv plane, the surface integral of f of x comma y comma z over the surface s, written as the double integral over the surface s of f of x comma y comma z, integrated with respect to s, is equal to the double integral over the region r of f of u comma v times the magnitude of the partial derivative of r with respect to u cross with the partial derivative of r with respect to v times differential a. So notice how to evaluate with the surface integral. We write f of x comma y comma z as a function of u and v using r of u comma v, and differential s is equal to the magnitude of this cross product, differential a. So going back to our problem, let's first take a look at the surface s in space. So we're integrating the integrand function over this surface and notice how if we project this onto the UV plane or look down on the UV plane, we can see that region R in the UV plane is this circle centered at the origin with the radius of four. So over here we have a graph of the region R in the UV plane, which we'll use later to determine the limits of integration. But let's first write the integrand function as a function of U and V. We're looking at R of U comma V, X, equals u cosine v, y equals u sine v, and z equals v. So f of u comma v would be the square root of the quantity one plus x squared would be the square of u cosine v plus y squared would be the square of u sine v. Let's go ahead and simplify. We'd have one plus u squared cosine squared v plus u squared sine squared v. You notice how here if we factor out u squared, we'd have f of u comma v equals the square root of the quantity one plus u squared times cosine squared v plus sine squared v, so f of u comma v is just the square root of the quantity one plus u squared. Now for our next step, let's go ahead and find the partial derivatives of r with respect to u and v. Let's do this on the next slide. So the partial derivative of r with respect to u would have an x component that's the partial derivative of u cosine v with respect to u, which would be cosine v. The y component is a partial of u sine v with respect to u, which would be sine v. And the z component is the partial of v with respect to u, which would be zero. Now we want to find the partial with respect to v. So the x component is going to be the partial of u cosine v with respect to v, which would be u times negative sine v or negative u sine v. The y component is the partial of u sine v with respect to v, which would be u cosine v. And the z component is the partial of v with respect to v, which would be one. So now we want to find the cross product of these two partial derivatives. We'll determine this cross product using a three by three determinant as shown here, where the first row of the unit vectors i, j, and k, the second row of the components of the partial with respect to u, the third row of the components of the partial with respect to v, Using expansion by minors, for this first two by two determinant, we eliminate the row one column of the i vector. So we'd eliminate row one, column one, leaving us with these four elements for the first determinant. For the second determinant, remember we have a minus here, and then we eliminate the row one column of the j vector. So we eliminate row one, column two, leaving us with these four elements. And then finally for the last two by two determinant, we eliminate the row and column of the k vector, so we eliminate row one, column three, leaving us with these four elements. And now we evaluate each two by two determinant 
by determining this product minus this product. So for the x component, we have sine v times 1 minus 0. So we have sine v times i. And then we have minus cosine v times 1 minus 0. So we have minus cosine vj. Plus, for the z component, we have u cosine squared v minus negative u sine squared v, which becomes u cosine squared v plus u sine squared v times k. But again, notice how if we factor out the u here, we have u times the quantity cosine squared v plus sine squared v, which simplifies to just u times 1, which is just u. So in component form, the cross product is angle bracket sine v, comma, negative cosine v, comma, u, angle bracket. And now we want to find the magnitude of this cross product, which I've also already set up. The magnitude of the cross product is equal to the square root of the square of sine v plus the square of negative cosine v plus u squared. We should recognize this again, cosine squared v plus sine squared v is equal to 1, and therefore the magnitude of the cross product is equal to the square root of the quantity 1 plus u squared. So going back to our first slide again, the magnitude of the cross product of the partial derivatives equals the square root of the quantity 1 plus u squared. So now we can set up the double integral shown here. With the given surface integral, is equal to the double integral over the region R, which we'll come back to, of f of u comma v, which is the square root of the quantity 1 plus u squared, times the magnitude of the cross product, which is also the square root of the quantity 1 plus u squared. And then for differential a, let's use the order of integration to u dv. So using the region here, or just the intervals given for u and v, the limits of integration for u are going to be from 0 to 4, because the radius of the circle is 4. And notice how it's also given here. And then to trace out this region in the uv plane, v would have to be from 0 to 2 pi all the way around the circle, which is also given here. Let's go and evaluate this on the next slide. Notice how this product simplifies nicely to 1 plus u squared. So this gives us a double integral of the quantity 1 plus u squared du dv. And now we integrate with respect to u. So we'd have u plus u to the third divided by 3, or 1 third u to the third. And now we need to find big F of b minus big F of a. So when u is 4, we have 4 plus 1 third times 4 cubed minus, when u is 0, we have 0 plus 1 third times 0 to the third. So here we're going to have 4 plus 64 thirds minus 0. 4 plus 64 thirds is equal to 76 thirds. And now we integrate with respect to v, so we have 76 thirds v, forming substitution. We have 76 thirds times the quantity 2 pi minus 0. So we have 76 thirds times 2 pi, which is equal to 152 thirds pi, which would be the exact value of the surface integral, or as a decimal approximation, this would be approximately 159.1740. I hope you found this helpful.